This week on episode 166 of the Cinema Psychos show, I watch a childhood hero die as we discuss George Lucas. Is he a rainbow turd emoji or a secret genius? Coming at ya. Hit it! Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. <laughs> oh, my God, don't stop now! With your hosts, Brian, John, and Elaine. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm your host, Brian Coddington, and my fellow co-hosts and filmmakers, John and Lane Wolscroft. Special effects are just a tool, a means of telling a story. People have a tendency to confuse them as an end to themselves. A special effect without a story is a pretty boring thing. Who said that? I can't. Oh, Who said, you know what? what? Oh, that's, that's some wisdom right there. George Lucas? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Goodness me! Back when he, you know, he still had uh, a little bit of black in his beard and uh, a, a soul in his body. <laughs> he never a, had a, a soul in his soul. body. Don't be silly. <laughs> we're 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 on episode one. 66. <laughs> Institute order of episode 166. Oh my. We're, and, we're coming in hot, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. We didn't plan that at all. It just <laughs> happened to work out that way. It was pretty exciting. And, uh, you know, with it being episode 166, uh, we are taking a look, another one of our retrospective episodes, uh, at the uh, career of one George Lucas. John's favorite toy maker. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wunder King blo- uh, box office toy maker, George Lucas. Yikes. And this was interesting because, like, unlike you know, Spielberg or Tim Burton or Kevin Smith, like, he doesn't have a lot of movies as a director. He's, you know, he's all over. He's director, writer, producer. But I would say more than anything, you know, you look at businessman George Lucas. Yes. Yeah. And, and like, yeah. I noticed that when I was kind of researching for this episode, I went back and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. He did. He, he directed Willow. Right. You know, and I look and I'm like, no, he didn't. He and did I'm not. like, I thought I heard he directed Howard the Duck. No, he didn't. No. Nope. He just executive produced it. Um, the only other two movies aside from obviously Star Wars. um, our THX 1138. Which I own because I'm a fucking snob. Yeah. <laughs> a film to a. And uh, American Graffiti. Yep. That's it. That's it. I know. Isn't that crazy to think? That's all. Well, this, and obviously the prequels. This film. Well, well, well I, I said um, other than the Star Wars. The oh, Star yes, yes, yes. Wars. The Wars. I, 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 I thought you said z- other z- than Star Wars. Okay. Wars. Z- 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 wars. Z- 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 <laughs> Plural. Yeah. Multiples. Yes. But isn't okay. that crazy to think that this this monolith of Hollywood, this this mega house of bullshittery i mean i would not say bullshittery i would just say mega house of money is he a genius or is he a genius bullshitter oh there's that that'll that'll be so much to discuss in this episode i'm very excited dudes that's a good one very excited dudes good good one did you did you read my my philosophical questions already because that's that's yeah (laughs) it's on there but uh but yeah, should we just jump into? I think Mr. we should, Mr. Lucas. Let's right. do it. All right, well, George Herbert Walker Lucas. No, I'm sorry. Uh, George <laughs> Walton Lucas Jr. Jun- <laughs> Jun- Herbert. Yeah, You're so <laughs> random. Junior was born May 14th, Junior. 1944, in Modesto, California. He is five foot seven inches tall. Uh, he is the son of a walnut farmer and salesman. Uh, walnut he, farmer. He is, uh, and this is up for California, debate. bro. Yeah. This is up for debate. It's true on his net worth because I've seen five point five billion. I've seen six billion. So at, at the point of five point five billion, does it fucking matter? He is the richest director. I think in once the world. you get to the billion level, at that point, it's just like yeah. fuck you. Right. <laughs> yeah, he is currently the richest director in the world. Spielberg is right behind him, and then James Cameron. Um, wow. Yeah, and uh, he is referred to as an American filmmaker, philanthropist, and entrepreneur. Lucas is best known for creating Star Wars and Indiana Jones franchises and founding Lucasfilm, LucasArt, Industrial Light, and Magic. He served as the chairman of Lucasfilm before selling it to Ha in 2012. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and then subsequently complained about selling it to Ha yeah. <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> oh, and I destroyed it. Oh. Yeah. He well, what in, do you fucking think is going to happen? <laughs> yeah, he lives in San El- 
Elzimo, Marin County, California. I don't know. I just butchered that. But um, our California audience is going to be pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. They actually are a large percentage of our audience. Is that, you know, yeah, it's like it's like 80 <laughs> degrees there, though, and we have a wind chill here of like eight. So, like, I think they like hearing it. about our cold weather. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow, what is, this, year. what is that cold <laughs> weather that you have? We don't have any of that. <laughs> um, but let's 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 briefly talk about a few of his companies to kind of like make sure we have an understanding of George Lucas. Yep. Uh, before we get into him, so Lucasfilm Ltd. is the big one. It's his was his production company before he sold to Walt Disney Studios. Uh, it was best known for creating Star Wars and Indiana Jones, um, and was one of the leaders in developing special effects, sound, and computer animation for film. It was founded by Lucas in seventy one. Um, under a different name at the time, but then was when um, Star Wars came out, was used primarily at the time as a means for him to have a financial stake in the Star Wars uh, universe because he only got paid $150,000 to write and direct uh, Star Wars. Oh, and really? They, yeah, oh, so, yeah. And they said, oh, you should you should renegotiate on that. And he said, well, instead of that, I just want to create an LLC and I want to have a stake in, you know, the merchandising because you know yeah the idea that oh no i didn't know it was going to be a hit and like the toys came later no he knew exactly what of course he, was he knew well i mean but yeah. for the studio star wars was a big gamble especially because of how the production broke down oh, they yeah. did a lot of it over in england because it was cheaper yep. over there they were trying to cut costs as much as they could they tanzania as well right they yeah and they i mean and they filmed it in the fucking desert mm-hmm. you know like they did a lot of it and too i mean like Say what you want about George Lucas now, but the stress of it almost killed him. You know, well, I mean, he, he, didn't he have a heart attack mm-hmm, in the in the middle of the production because it was a lot of like balls in the air? Because too, he was creating industrial ILM at the time, like yeah. all the stuff that we see now that we just kind of t- take as a given. He was also creating like that industry. You know, he was inventing the miniatures and how to kind of like trick the eye and trick cameras with that stuff. I mean, I wouldn't, I yeah, wouldn't I mean, okay, say he wasn't inventing it. That's no. true. I misspoke. Yeah, he wasn't inventing no. it. He was mass producing it and creating it to be something that could be more broadly used by a company. Even that, I don't give him complete credit because he did pull people who were veterans okay. of the effects industry who worked on um, 2001. Sure. The Space sure. Odyssey. Okay. I would say that he, again, this get, kind of goes back to, this is going to be our kind of big point is, I think he was the the driving business force. He's a brilliant marketer and entrepreneur. Yes, I would say that. I I would not say like he didn't invent the idea of using a computer sure. to do a repeatable shot, which for for everything about Star Wars, you know, you could say the story, the big takeaway from it is it's really the first time that the effects could be repeated over and over again that you could do passes right. that had never been done before. Right. So, and that was honestly, um, the effects artist's name was Dykstra, Dykstra camera. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the one who actually, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, he also worked on sewer shark, a Sega CD game that came <laughs> built in with Sega CD. So if anybody knows what I'm talking about, let's be friends. Yeah. But, but the point I'm just get, trying to get across is, is, is I think that Lucas was the directing and driving force behind it. Um, I think he had a vision of this is what I want my movie to look like. Right. Who ha- who can build the tools for You're that? You're right. And, and too, like that's and that's my misspeaking of like the invention. You know, is it fair to say that like in this case in this in this world here and and my original point was just yeah. that there was a lot of balls in the air. Yeah. It was a lot of stress. It was on two continents. Dude almost died of a heart attack yeah. from the stress. Yeah. But is it fair to say that maybe in in at least this production of Star Wars, Lucas was like the Steve Jobs, where he yes. found people more yeah. talented than he to bring his vision Absolutely. to life? I think I think that's that's fair. And like Steve Jobs, he's an asshole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I so, don't know Lucas personally so, to say that, but I can listen, just... <laughs> I don't want the like the the artwork that Brian like puts together just to be like Lucas's face and the shit emoji. Like, I don't want to just crap on <laughs> Wait, the guy. No, that's that's maybe <laughs> it. Brian, no. make it look as cheap as possible. Like, just tape a picture of George Lucas to your desk and tape an emoji and just photograph it. Don't even do Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> At least make it a rainbow poop emoji. Come I might on. have to do a rainbow he poop is, emoji. Well, he's very progressive. We'll get to that. 
come on, guys. Like, this is, I mean, this is personally very difficult for me because, like, when I was, you know, 11, like, every, you know, every kid, like, I mean, Star Wars was the movie that made me want to be a filmmaker. And yeah, damn right he was God. The guy could do no fucking wrong. I I didn't know anything. Well, I didn't know anything (laughs) about that stuff then. I mean, you know, because, like, too, the internet wasn't that prevalent and you couldn't get the kind of information that we can now where like he sucks and you know, <laughs> I'm serious I have God is dead in our library I still have a an entire biography of him that I did it's called Skywalking oh my god it's so, it's so I almost brought it down but I, I, was I remember I think when we did our, our Star Wars episode you you told me about this mm-hmm. that and you, it's all about it. him it's about you know his life and everything and did a fucking book report on that shit and yeah. probably like junior high, high school, whatever. Yeah. But that was hard for me to accept, number one, when the prequels came out and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then I saw him and I was like, what? What? What, what happened? What, why? What? I, I, th- I think there is a uh, cycle of grief <laughs> that you go through when you watch the prequels the first time. I don't know about you all, but Stop like, that, <laughs> I don't know about you all, but like when I saw... uh. Episode one, mm-hmm. okay, in the theater. Mm-hmm. I saw it with, with my dad and my brothers, my brother, because uh, Tyler was way too young at the time. And you come out of it, and you're just, like, trying to, like, convince yourself right. that it wasn't a shit sandwich. Well, because you got stars in your eyes, yes. right? Like, you saw a first run of a Star Wars yes. movie, which is, like, the dream, right? And only a couple of years ago, you saw all of the movies mm-hmm. in theaters mm-hmm. for the first time. The, the, special, the special edition. Yep. Mm-hmm. And even then, you're like... I don't know any better. And you're so happy. So that so happy. you know that so plastic do back that is literally just you know covering one of the scenes that's just CGI stuck in. You're like, I don't know any better. That looks good. Sure, that's yeah, fine. You know, do backs are cool. You don't realize. You don't realize that honestly, no one who ha- who who is alive today uh, who wasn't born uh, in that time it run it ran mm-hmm. uh, has really seen the original film. Like, only the people who have seen the movie in 1977 have actually seen the original movie. Exactly. Exactly. Um, But you don't know any better. Mm -mm. So Mm -hmm. you go through a cycle of grief. There's convincing yourself that that was good, even though it was bad. And then you get angry. And then you start bargaining. And then you just accept that it was shit. Well, well, I mean, but like. <laughs> when you saw Attack of the Clones, you're like, oh, this wasn't a one off. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. Attack of the Clones, it wasn't. Like, that, Phantom Menace wasn't the bad one. <laughs> well, too. And then, like, I feel like there's some point where, like, I don't know if it comes for everybody in Attack of the Clones or if it's Revenge of the Sith. And you're like, I'm rethinking everything about Star Wars now. To be where fair. To be fair, Revenge of the Sith, I did not hate nearly as much okay there's fair. more bad star wars movies than there are good ones that's fair um but too also i'm yeah. way nerdier than you guys and don't forget i loved all the non like now non canon novels that's true so you mean the legends well that's i think is that <laughs> they're what they're called, called legends now yeah well that's what made actually that's what disney calls them uh Star Wars very popular in the 90s again right. all along with the video games which uh became under the umbrella of LucasArts Entertainment Corporate LLC Super Star Wars um which I, I t- had Terracossi and oh and Dark Forces Dark Forces was for us computer nerds that weren't allowed to have video games I'm sorry. like other video games Shadows of the Empire Dark Rogue Forces Squadron. was a good game I, I never I never had that It was I, a good game The it only was... Star Wars I game I had was was Masters of Terracotta Dark, Dark Forces which was, was that, hard as that shit. fighting game remember that Oh mm, uh, yes yes no. I do for PlayStation I do not. It, it was kind of a stinky Dark it was, Forces it was, was hard but it was it was satisfying though You know, and say what you want about George Lucas he is on the ball and on the stick in terms of like possible popular future technology he created um it was under a different name at the time but lucas arts in 1982 because oh there's video games are gonna be real popular well you know it, to be fair to be fair 1982 probably the worst time to create a video game company um but uh you know at that time <laughs> video games were everywhere it was the newest thing pac-man pac-man yeah. and it got to the point as Don't i said i think 80 what was it 83 when the video game bubble the burst, crash. the yeah. crash happened. So again, not the best time <laughs> to get into video games. <laughs> or maybe because or, everything was cheap. Well, well, it was just, it, it, you know, video games at that time were, were cheap, inexpensive to make. Right. And, you know, you could, you could, you know, really like 
go gangbusters on it. But as I said, 82 was probably the worst time because a year later, <laughs> it's going to shit the bed. Uh, and obviously, we have to be talking about Industrial Light and Magic. Mm-hmm. The American Motion Picture Visual Effects Company that was founded in May 1975 by George Lucas. It's almost like oh. you're reading off of Wikipedia or something. <laughs> like that. But like your voice is so yeah. pleasing. Like for as much as you say things that upset me with it, like <laughs> sometimes I could just listen to your voice. It's very soothing. Um, obviously, this is uh, connected with Pixar. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, well, now uh, now it is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't Pixar then. Just remember, some of our young viewers may not know how it was back in the day. (laughs) Actually, I'm sure none of our viewers are that young. (laughs) There's uh, Skywalker Ranch, which is the big studio (laughs) that they use. Um, Dude, I've always wanted to go. Someday, man. They got statues of Yoda there. Someday. Well, the thing is now that when now with the the mouse hanging over, (laughs) it's really only used, I think, for audio now for for movies. Probably. Uh, Really? Because I think they outsource most of the, uh, in terms of anything connected with like. I'm pretty sure. You know, ILM will still do, still does stuff. I mean, they still are 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 pushing out VFX. They're still a big player. Okay. Um, Interesting. Gotcha. Okay. Uh. It looked really cool, though. And, John, you found out a fun trivia fact of the address. Because we were doing research yesterday, yeah. and John was, like, telling me fun tidbits. Yeah, it's on... And making a fat joke about Lucas every five oh seconds. God. It's on Lucas Street. And oh, my is... God. Oh, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> wait, listen, wait listen, minute, listen. It is actually based on, like, an uh, early 20th century um, founder in the area who has no connection to George Lucas. Isn't that crazy? That is pretty crazy. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. yeah. Could it maybe be... I did the same reaction well, you did. I was like, ew. And I was like, oh, wait, it has well, nothing well, to do okay, with it? Okay, let me ask you this yeah. question. Do you think that when George Lucas was scouting locations... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you think he maybe thought... Oh, well, now, maybe, maybe. Well, now, I can say that it was named after me. Maybe. <laughs> That's possible. <laughs> But of course, Skywalker Ranch has a beautiful ranch, vineyards, a garden with fruits and vegetables, an on-site restaurant, an outdoor swimming pool, fitness center, racquetball courts, and a man-made Ewok Lake. They, it's An called Ewok it's called Lake? Ewok yeah. Lake. Really? Yeah. So if you want to vomit about anything, uh. vomit about that. <laughs> so the man really loves Ewoks, is what you're saying? That, I guess. Uh, all the, you know, all the movies. He's a troll. Like anything that we don't like. <laughs> he's a troll. An attack he's of the just clones. Just fucking with us. I was I was gonna say an attack of the clones. Jar Jar Binks literally looks at the camera. Which, <laughs> it's not an accident how because you, he's not even real. You, he's you, digital, so they how, had to I was animate say, him that how, way. How do you do that? How do you how do you literally say, hey, you know, it'd be really cool is if we have him break the fourth wall. And again, it kind of looks like <laughs> he gives that look like I'm still here, fuckers. <laughs> Even though it's like a time jump, like it could have been like, oh man, it's a shame that Jar Jar died in that horrible car accident. <laughs> oh my god. I feel so bad for the actor that played Jar Jar. I feel, he was made promises. I feel bad for yeah. him. I don't feel bad for the character. Like if you it, I, have you have you read at all anything about Jar Jar's fate in the new series? No. Movies? So there was a book called Aftermath, and there's a series of, of books in this. Is Aftermath. Aftermath? No, John. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, apparently, Stop. um, you know how I always said like Jar Jar is really the cause of all of the horribleness. Yeah. In I'm, Star Wars, I'm familiar with your and opinion. And apparently, in the Aftermath series of books. Jar Jar is literally a crazed street clown that oh, everyone hates because okay. they know what he did. Yeah. So he's like completely shit on. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> no bitterness there. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's really horrible. See, I just think of the scene in Hannibal where he teaches uh, Mason Verger to cut off his own face while he's high on drugs. <laughs> I just replaced Mason Verger with Jar Jar. You guys are bad Mason people. thought it was a good idea at the time. <laughs> I, feel, to cut your face. I feel so bad for the actor, man. Lightsaber. That was crap. <laughs> a lightsaber oh, butter knife. <laughs> <laughs> you guys oh, are the no, worst. I can still see it. You guys are the uh, worst, in case you want. Yes, yes. And obviously, there's THX uh, LTD for for sound. So anytime you go that death wrong. in the movie theater, yeah. You know, I I don't think they do that anymore. I have I have it's, it's honestly been it's true. I haven't had my ears blown out in a long time since yeah, I've I heard anyone anyone either. do the THX thing. Yeah. Listeners, yeah. if you know the status of the THX sound 
bumper. Please <laughs> let us know Please on our us Twitter. Know. Yeah, so Industrial Light and Magic, Pixar, LucasArts, Lucasfilms, Lots THX. Of companies. Yeah, it's say what you want about him as a as a filmmaker. He kind of revolutionized through his pocketbook how we we kind of see in Well, in like I said, he now. curated <laughs> talent, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, the only thing I will say in in this is I'd say that he has a great way of using the little bit of notoriety and power that he amasses from literally a series of movies and invests it well. Right. Yeah. Okay. I will say that. Um, I'm not, I don't hate him as much as you do, John, where I know <laughs> that you're like literally, we haven't even gotten any of the jokes that you're going to going to throw. Um, <laughs> it's still early, uh, but uh, hates a strong word. I think that, <laughs> He is a grossly overrated man, and I think he's built a Here lot of that legend. Uh, yeah. But the but, uh, big thing I will say is that his talent has been in how he invests his yes. power and money, okay, except for that, that most recent one, um, which we'll get to. <laughs> uh, but the way that he has invested it has helped filmmaking as a whole. You know, you wouldn't have uh, Marvel if you didn't have Industrial Light and Magic. That's that's honestly what it comes down to. Um, you wouldn't have any of the big blocks of box office films that are VFX heavy if you didn't have Industrial Light and Magic, if you didn't have Lucas Lucas Arts and Lucasfilm. All those things he brought to the table. So I will give him credit for that. Well, well, speaking of hole, Dorothy <laughs> Eleanor Lucas pushed George out of her hole um, into the world in Modesto, wow. California. Wow, there's something <laughs> wrong with you on the inside, John. Really? Um, you just had to say that, didn't you? <laughs> You're a broken bastard. Well, long before he was making films, uh, he was really into race cars and vroom vroom and drive fast. Um, Which eventually came up yeah. in his second film, yeah. American Graffiti. Right. Yeah. Um, but a few days before high school graduation, uh, George Lucas uh, was driving his souped up Auto Bianchi, I don't know. It's it's, it's, it's an Auto Bianchi <laughs> Bianchina. I think that's what it's pronounced. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's Lillian. it's an Italian mini car, so it's yeah. it's not unrelated to the uh, Fiat that we know today. It's more related to the Italian version of the Fiat. And don't forget, this would have been like a fifties car. So, so let me get this straight. Everyone else is driving around in beater cars, and this. And here comes George Lucas with his Italian car. I mean, I think he did yeah, work. Daddy had a little money. Well, yeah. I think he worked after school, though, because, okay. I mean, if he came from farmers, I think he worked after school to save up all the money he okay. could for it. And one of the things that's interesting, and I, I know a little bit about his interest in cars and, and, you know, what John's leading up to with this story is um, he customized the car. And what's interesting about it is um, he customized the car so that the seatbelts would bolt to the floor. Okay. Which is a common racing modification because okay. he liked, you know, racing or whatever. And um, I'm sorry if you wanted to keep going. I, I wasn't oh. trying to cut you off, but <coughs> I do know a little this bit about this. This is a collaborative this. process. I do, know, okay. I do know a little bit um, about this. I may just jump in when you yeah. say things. But I, I read that another driver broadsided him, but George Lucas is also known for hundreds of speeding tickets. So I, <laughs> I love that, it, that the blame is completely off George here. I'm sure he did something stupid. Yeah, I in, well, in I read accident, that too. But, that um, a, a friend Chevy Impala, like he tried to, like a friend tried to pass George, and so they were kind of like doing impromptu, like drag racing or whatever. I never, like assholes, yeah. I didn't read that in my in my, bi- in my biography. You, you mean of you him. mean kind of like in Back to the Future Part Three when Marty and Needles are racing, and, <laughs> right? And come they, on, McFly, come on, McFly. <laughs> <laughs> well, truly, I mean, I I don't think that the circumstances are as important. I think that there's two things, because John's about to explain that uh, George Lucas got in a near-fatal car accident. That's, okay. that's the big deal here. Yeah. I think there's two things you need to know, and I and I think everything else is kind of ancillary to the point um, of his car accident, whether it was his fault, whether there was anybody else involved, because all I really read was that he lost control of the car. Mm. That's all I really knew. Uh, the two things you need to know is number one, his car got wrapped around a walnut tree. Walnut is the hardest wood that yeah, there I was is. Say. You wrap your car around a walnut you tree, you're die. going to fucking die. Yeah. Number two, the modified seatbelts that he had in his car came loose and threw him from the vehicle, and that Holy is what fucking shit. saved his life. Because there any other way, if he had been trapped in the car, so the seatbelt the, seat the seatbelt actually did its job and 
Held him. It would have killed him. It would have yeah. killed him. A hundred percent. Wow. Fuck only, you, Ralph Nader. <laughs> the only reason he lived was because wow. he was thrown from the vehicle. And um, the car wreck was so bad. I have a picture of it. The car wreck was so bad. Um, it made the front page of the... Um, uh, he's from Modesto. Yeah. And their paper is the Modesto B. So it was like... It is, local youth survives. No, <laughs> local racing racing idiot. Li- liter- <laughs> no, literally youth survives crash. Look at that fucking car. Oh my god, it that is, is a mess. insane. It is a Ooh. mess. I well, mean, we'll, he- we'll put that on on the internet. local youth. Yeah, there is crazy. There crash. is no way he should have lived. Um, he was like in intensive care. I think he used the force. He roll. He rolled a bunch of times before the tree was wrapped or the car was wrapped around the tree. Um, and then I mean, this is a mangled mess of metal yeah. and and wood. Um, and those cars back back in the day, they were strong. Like they're not like the cars nowadays. Oh yeah, that, absolutely. It was you know, all metal, half no plastic. plastic. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, that that's what it was because the seatbelt snapped on the third roll and it threw him from the uh, wow. vehicle, and a bystander was able to pull him away, and wow. he called an ambulance. So um, crazy. Uh, his lungs were crushed, and he was in intensive care for two weeks. But he he did have to be in the hospital for a long time. If only he months. had a back to tank. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Back to tanks are fucking sweet, man. I again, that's one thing that's in like the legends books that I wish was explored well, more in the movie. Well, let's talk about the, some of the the bullshit behind George Lucas, where they claim. It. <laughs> okay, so so John, just yes, just, please yeah. please just get hateful, for, John, just for yeah. the sake of. I don't know. Maybe objective reporting and not like forcing your opinion on I'm our not, listeners. I'm no journalist. <laughs> Listen, why this is not? Op-ed podcast. Could you explain the story and then give your opinion I, of I hatred? I was trying to. No, I was trying. To. You said let's talk about the bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's this very isn't weighted. Fox News. That's very okay. weighted, John. If you could Fox be a News. little that's Democrat. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, but, just yeah. just as a point of reference, really quick, yes, please. Because George Lucas got in this huge car accident, he did kind of figure after months in the hospital, like, okay, probably not going to be a race car driver now. Probably that's what he had originally wanted to do. Probably George not. Lucas was a race car driver, drove so goddamn fast, <laughs> never did win no checkered flags, and never did come in last. Uh, <laughs> okay, so anyway, yeah, I'm not claims- I'm not saying you have to be like of an unbiased, completely report reporter, but like. Just say how the story goes first, and then you can shit all over it. Well, but make it after rainbow this, poop. This okay. Accident like George <laughs> Lucas had a vision of Star Wars, and that was where it was born. And and could what could I, your tone be any more? Uh, you're maybe just, not. You're the fucking worst. But I would say that is complete and total horseshit. Okay, you utterly failed at what I requested. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, I can't all right, help it. Cool. But, thanks. Uh, but that just that sounds like one of those legend nonsense things uh, to me. I don't, he didn't come up with it at that time. He was catatonic, and then he was in the hospital shitting himself well, no, for I mean, three like, months while he recovered. I think I think that it's a nice story, but that doesn't mean it's not true. I don't know. I it's like it's like with a lot of we, things. We really don't know. We can't. To be say, fair, John, we can't. Okay, say. Right. so since you so spectacularly failed, John, um, <laughs> so you know Sorry. George Lucas was laying in a hospital bed, and uh, you know so my biography goes, so the story goes. You know he was laying in bed, and and as he kind of was hovering around, you know life and death, and was kind of you know just kind of like struggling with basic functions and working towards being healthy and whatnot because he was he was a skinny, you know, young mm-hmm. teenager in in this case. You know, he was very young when this happened. The the story goes that is that he, this is kind of when he imagined the force of how it connects us all and how there's a life force kind of flowing through all human beings that connects everything to everything. Yeah. And and from there the seed was kind of planted that later became the idea for Star Wars. Right. And I don't know that I, we can say whether or not that's true. I, I can't. I mean, here's the thing. I've come up with, with film <laughs> ideas while I'm driving to a supermarket. Right. So, Me I too. mean, I, I, I can't speak for that. Me too. You know, and, and you can't choose no. like your story because no. sometimes I'll come up with a really good idea when I'm in the forest cathedral in Cook Forest. It's the most beautiful goddamn yep. place on earth. Sometimes I come up with a great idea when I'm painting my fucking bathroom. You can't pick. Or you're taking a shit. Yeah, you don't get to pick. Yeah, I wonder if he created R two D two while taking a crap. You know what I mean? Right. But you can't write that in a book. No. But I mean, but like but, you shouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't well, want like my crap ideas like written about that. Like, <laughs> I don't know. My crap ideas. I the mean, autobiography by he, Lady here's Wolfgang. the thing. I. I <laughs> Forward it, by John it, I think if anything, 
we could say that George Lucas is a master at marketing. So, of course, he's going he, – if, if this – let's say this isn't true. Sure. Okay? Let's play devil's advocate sure. and say he, ma- he came up with this – In John's case, advocate. Yeah. Let's came up with <laughs> – he came up with this while he was taking shit or while he was jacking off. Or something or like that. Or he was like figuring you know, out the or costume he bag he didn't, or, or, but, but, or yeah, he but, just copied Kurosawa and Flash Gordon. Po- point is, yeah. point is, you've got to market it somehow. And what better way to market it than saying, hey, you know, I had this massive crash, which is true, did happen. Um, and while this happened, I, I did think about the Thor force. I did think about how we're all connected. And you know what? You could say, okay, that's great. It's a great story. Or you could not believe it. I think it really just, it, he's a master marketer. Of course he's going to say that. But, I, I mean, I don't know. Sure, I don't know where his head's thinking. But at the time that he be... said that this happened, I mean, he was young. Yeah. I mean, even even Anakin wasn't evil all at once. I mean, mm-hmm. it could have really happened well, and he little, was a young kid, yeah, you know? To be a little more open-minded about it, I would say maybe he, he was thinking about life and death. Sure. That's probably And then he life. said, I was thinking about the Force. Like, he, he construed it to be... And that's all yeah. I've ever read is that he really thought about the force. I yeah. I've never read anything that he plot point by plot point wrote Star Wars when he was in no. the hospital. Is he, is he about if, flying into the tree? If, he sees Yoda. I mean, if you're reading, well, if, if you've was, read that was that, years later though when yeah. he was in college. Yeah, and if it. you've read that, like I don't, I've never <clears throat> read that. I yeah. read that he just kind of came. Like had like his his come to Yoda moment. Like it wasn't Jesus, it was Yoda, where he came up. No, no, I'm just joking. But he came kind of up with this idea of the Force because yeah. he hovered like in that very yeah. scary space of walnut tree in life. Yeah. No, I mean, but, but I mean, either way, I think only he could really answer that. Sure. You know? And and he's evil now, so he'll lie. <laughs> and of course, he destroyed one of his dad's goddamn walnut trees. But anyway. <laughs> It wasn't on his own farm. God, that'd be awful, wouldn't it? That would be pretty awful. But um, it's too bad yeah. his dad wasn't a moisture farmer. That'd be so good. <laughs> well, he needs something that understands the, uh, the language of my, uh, binary load lifters. Very similar to your evaporators in most respects. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, watching Star Wars with us is the Nerd. worst. It's the worst. Watching it with us is intolerable. But anyways, moving on here. So after uh, he does some recovery, he wants to go to film school. His dad says, "Eat a bag of dicks." Um, <laughs> It could be well, that maybe that's when he discovered the idea of Star Wars as well, his I'll relationship you, with his daddy. Well, it's George, a whole other year. George's, yeah. George's grades were real bad. Like he didn't yeah. give a He's shit a about student. school. Yeah. He liked cars and he liked girls, and that's it. Yeah. Mm. Um, he doesn't like sand though. No, he hates it. Oh my god, it's, it's rough and it gets, it gets everywhere. Everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. Uh, we're the worst. But yeah, he went to Modesto Junior College, studied social sciences. And after a while, he met some people that got him uh, involved with making some films. And through a buddy, he had a connection that got him into USC. I didn't realize. I thought he went to USC from the get-go. I, I must have skipped that community well, college thing. And I think that that's a good lesson to learn. Like, I think that, you know, community college is so stigmatized. And I think that's so stupid. I went to a community college for right. two years before you, I transferred you went, to and, and you're successful. Yeah. Fucking George Lucas went to community yeah. college. Can we stop the stigma with fucking community college? They're a great resource. They're great for communities. Yeah. They're, I mean, it's in the goddamn name. Yeah. Well, I, that's awesome. I think that's really cool. Well, when he graduated from, you know, his undergrad, he went, he tried to go into the Air Force, um, but was turned down because of his numerous speeding tickets, oddly. Weird. Really? What a strange thing. Wow. And then he was drafted into Vietnam, but he was exempted from service because medical tests showed he had diabetes. That gets you a... That yeah. exempts you from the military. Yeah. Is oh, Back is it because then, yeah. you're dependent on medication? Yes. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, he must be the kind where he has to have like the insulin. I bet yep. he has one of those pumps now. Probably. But that's you know he. Oh, um, that's interesting. <clears throat> yeah, he went to USC. Uh, became quite popular there. Um, I'm not saying I looked at USC when I was in high school, but like. I'm but you did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, he worked on the uh, documentary "Give Me Shelter" about the nightmare at Altamont. He was involved with that. He, oh, obviously, yeah. he made THX at the time. Um, after graduating, he uh, got to he won, I guess, for lack of a better term, like a. A sure. chance to observe a Warner Brothers film. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. And he chose Finian's Rainbow, which was being directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Dude, you are, like, <laughs> reading my book report to me. <laughs> this say, is amazing. Ba- back then, Coppola was the shit. Oh, my yeah. God. Coppola that, was, He like, was, him and, and Scorsese at the time were He was, like, the, the biggest shit. rainbow emoji turn. Yeah. Francis Ford Coppola, director of Jack. Um, 
the Rob Williams movie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you really got to do that, do you? You got to do that. Could, couldn't say Dracula, Godfather. No, you pick fucking Jack. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you remember who our co host is? I know, <laughs> but come on, man. He is such a force. Starring uh, Bill Cosby. Uh, but we didn't God know. damn it. We didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's where he he created a, a friendship with Coppola, and they started uh, another big company. We got about American Zoetrope, which was yep. the oh, idea yeah. of working outside the Hollywood system. Mm-hmm. I'm convinced that George Lucas just wants to make movies for himself that he watches by himself in his living room. I don't think he wants <laughs> oh, anybody. To, it's to not a living home. room. He has a screening room. Yeah, he has his own screening room. I've told you guys this story yeah. before. Yeah. His screening room with his grape smell. Oh my God. Go back into like our Star Wars uh, library, guys, oh and you will God. find the fucking grape smell story. Enjoy. But um, obviously, that's where he makes THX 1138 into a feature film based on his um, extremely successful college opus. Um, and this movie's terrible. <laughs> it's boring <laughs> as shit. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I have, and this is terrible, and I'll admit this, I've only seen clips of THX 1138. That's probably for the best. It's, we watched it together. I have not, not long ago, seen right? the entire film because I really have no desire to. It's hard to follow. I mean, <laughs> especially for like such a simple plot. I think like because it is, it isn't about like humans in the strictest sense. It's really hard to connect with the characters, yeah. and I feel like that's kind of like ironic because he does do a lot of work with you know with not with like people of earth or anything but in this case like there is like nothing to connect to like it's very hard to give a goddamn about these it characters. just feels like 1984 from the look yeah. of it like, it's you know i think a like lot that. of directors unless you're like a comedy director or someone that like everybody wants to be scorsese or stanley kubrick 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 um, right and i think that you know you you see like sugarland express with spielberg like he was trying to be bogdanovich and he, right. but he wasn't he was the guy he was jaws you know um i this is george lucas trying to be his buddy coppola and it's like i think know, from the look of it it's, yeah. it's him trying to be kubrick yeah like, from the look, how, look of it it looks and look look how how minimalist and you know it's just like 2001 See? Right. <laughs> I was like, no, no, you need to make movies about like space slugs and robots and, and boom, boom, and, and the trash cans. Women and gold bikinis. Yeah. Boom, boom. <laughs> boom, boom. Why are you this way? But that led him, obviously, now we're going we're gonna to go into <clears throat> his, uh, his, his filmography here a little bit. Okay. Um, was, you know, he stepped up to the plate and made um, American Graffiti. Yep. Which I, you know, okay. I know I've, I've been negative this whole time, but it's mostly been no, <laughs> no. You haven't been Quiet negative woman. at all. <laughs> Quiet woman, woman. Oh, oh my shit! God. She's gonna get you right in the face. Oh right? God, <laughs> but, what is wrong with your face? It's been mostly for for comical purposes because you know I love Indiana Jones, I love Star Wars. Like he gave both those things to me, but I'm gonna be negative again. American Graffiti. It's a profanely overrated movie. It is. It, I mean, yeah. he's not wrong, and no, like I'm trying not. like he's to not, not be a giant douche canoe. It's got it's got some some future stars in it, but it's really just like cars. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, That's Red Letter it. Media puts it best. Like this is like one of his more successful projects because it's it's about writing what you know, and yeah. it's about a bunch of rich kids driving cars really fast their parents bought for them, and but that's I, what his world is. I yeah. really don't yeah. think that he was rich growing up, though, John. Better the, off than than most. I, I, I yeah, yeah. I mean, I if you're he, here's the thing: if you're if his family's growing walnuts, yeah. and that whole valley is known for growing walnuts, I mean, mm-hmm. he's probably somewhat better off than most people. I did do some research. I could not find what his, his dad's like net worth was or anything like that. Like mm, it was hard to Google in the first place. <laughs> but he know. he owned yeah. a walnut farm, right? Yes. So and he was a salesman on top of that. Like, okay. Outside oh. of being okay. owning the farm, so I but, think he was. But it, I, I think if anything, you know, just as you said, this movie is probably the most honest version of Lucas because it actually is what he knows. Yeah. He knows racing. He knows that time period. Um, he grew up in that time period. So yeah, it's that's probably why people say, "Oh man, it's a really good movie." Because, because a lot it's of honest. Touch California teenagers. Because it's yeah. honest. Because he it's was extremely honest. I guess. 
Yeah, it was made for seven hundred fifty thousand. It ended up being one of the highest grossing films of the seventies. Uh, it was nominated for five Academy Awards, two wow. for George writing and directing. Wow. Um, yeah, he he has four nominations in total. Uh, he got another two for writing and directing Star Wars, and then then he was done. Uh, I, I also nice. think too that there is a because when when did Amer- American Graffiti come out? Seventy f- mm, Lane. Yeah, I mean, uh. I th- seventy. Let me look it up. Oh, four. Three, it was early seventies. Early seventies. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So seventy three or so. But all right. So 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 uh, yeah. Lane's you on it. You are. One second. Oh, Brian's on it. Brian's gonna beat you. I'm gonna beat you. Seventy three. Seventy three. Um, Damn it! Yeah. Oh, I had it. I had it. So so um, <laughs> here's the thing too. I think the other thing too is because this this movie takes place in what the fifties. Yes. Okay. Uh it's the nostalgia factor. Absolutely. 100% nostalgia factor. Which is crazy because, like, that, like, the time frame of that movie in which it was made and took place, like, it's such a small gap. And, like, now that movie's, like, fucking ancient. Yeah. Ugh, I just, that's so weird, isn't it? Well, it, you know, but think about it. Now we're watching, yeah. like, if you look at current state of media, mm-hmm. what is now the big thing? Nostalgia over the 80s, right? It's a, it's a 25 to 30 it's year It's a 25 window. to 30 year window. Yeah. American mm-hmm. Graffiti hits that. 25 to 30 year window i mean more like 20 years um but it's the same thing it, it absolutely is the same thing yeah um it's nostalgia you know and in his next film obviously hits all those notes uh, oh yeah by homaging the the 40s in early 50s and that was uh and ripping go, off let of, me get the name of this right what joseph campbell <laughs> star wars star <laughs> The, no, Star Wars. I think it's oh, oh, oh. isn't it? Isn't it, 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 it the right. Star Wars? Yeah. Oh. It was the Star Wars, right? These no, yeah. or Star the Book Wars. of the Wills, yeah. <laughs> the the Chronicles of Luke Starkiller on the Galactic. <laughs> it's like has nine hundred different titles. I'm gonna punch you both in the face. <laughs> well, no, it, it did have like thirty. It did. Different it titles. did. I'm not yeah. amused with either of you. Um, Get it right. But yeah, and talk about you know talking. Copying Flash Gordon and Kurosawa and other things, and Joseph Campbell. Yeah. Well, why is that significant? I mean, like he grew up with that stuff; right. it made an Im- impact. And that's why on she, him. you know, it's okay. Stranger Things is to us now, and the way mm, the '60s Stranger were so things popular in so the happy. '90s and in the early 2000s, the '70s was so popular. This was the you know the late '70s, so it was all about the '40s and early '50s. And uh, yep. was George Lucas the original Quentin Tarantino? He asked John asked me this yesterday, and I still I, don't have an answer. I mean, I I, I think probably he's he, pulling from so I, many things. Well, I shot think for shot. I think he is. The, well, one you, you could say that every director is pulling from something. So I mean, you know, you look at William Castle; he's pulling from you know other directors and other things as well. Sure, but, but this is this almost seems like a postmodernist direct uh, homage to the yeah the things he grew up. So with. I, I I think it's it's worth saying that. Um, but I think like George Lucas is Quentin Tarantino if he stopped at making Pulp Fiction and just made derivatives of Pulp Fiction and called them Pulp Fiction. Interesting. You know, yeah, what I, mean? I don't I don't see a lot of similarities myself personally. Because think about it, like Quentin Tarantino for all of his hey guys, um, uh, you know, all right, uh, uh. Um, you know, he continues to make different movies that are somewhat similar. Whereas yeah. Lucas goes to Star Wars and he's like, oh, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just going to do it. Uh, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> you, are so really, you really are bringing a heart attack. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> um, These are so unkind. But I, I think it's just, Qu- you know, Quentin Tarantino at least is making other films and kind of honing his craft after that. Whereas George Lucas just kind of coasts on that one film. Yeah, I don't. I don't personally see a lot of uh, similarities. Yeah. It's it's like a Hudsucker proxy. Like he made the. I Hula love that hoop. movie. <laughs> and he had to live I, off the. Hula I really love that movie. <laughs> My God, <laughs> you know, for kids, it's yeah, for kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, he uh, has a little trouble making this movie. You know, um, yeah, has some health issues. Yeah, right. And it, do you guys think that is why he stepped away from the directing chair? I think that's part of a it. A lot of people told him. To. I think a that's lot of part people... of it. I I think it. The, I mean, honestly, like there, you you are less hands on uh, when you step away from the directing chair. I mean, being a director of a film takes a lot out of you, um, and especially for him. I mean, he's making a movie that 
everyone pretty much told him, eh, this sucks. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, this is not going to work. You're going to lose money. Um, you, you're you're going to... I think he went over budget on the first Star Wars as well. Uh, you know, on top of everything else. So, yeah, I think that was a lot. And I think, you know, for the sequels, he kind of was like, you know, I'm not going to kill myself. <laughs> Uh, so, so I'll hand them off to competent directors. I'll still have a hand in it. And I think, uh, I'm pretty sure he handled some of the writing for, uh, Return and Empire. Yeah. He did the Not a lot story of it, for Empire. He, yeah. And he, I think he did story and co-screenplay for Jedi. If I yeah. Remember correctly. Mm-hmm. But, but I mean, at the same time, I mean. That's why the dialogue's so super in Jedi. <laughs> I like Ouch. Jedi. That's my favorite of the three. Okay. <laughs> Um, but it's okay, Brian. You can be wrong. <laughs> just kidding. Hey, now. I'm just kidding. Um, but but I I just think that that is probably part of it. You know. Right. Well, too. I mean, like the the. I mean, we're joking. We're laughing. We're like, you know, making a lot of like glib things about this. But like, I mean, the first movie. I mean, he did have a heart attack, and like a lot of people it told him, like, almost kill him. Don't do it again. <laughs> like, don't <laughs> don't direct again because yeah. the stress will kill you. <laughs> so I mean, you know. I don't mean to minimize what happened, but like. A lot of every movie is pressure, but what the fuck happened to him? Like that, this nearly killed him. That like it, the Godfather didn't kill Coppola or Taxi. Everything was riding on this. I mean, like George Lucas. I mean, he'd had success with American Graffiti, but everything was riding on this. Yeah. and he was you know running with like all the money. He was like over budget. He was on like I said, he was on like three continents or two continents or something. I mean, he was filming in all these locations. He had all these balls in the air and like. Everything was really dependent on what ILM was doing and, and what they were creating, yep. and like if ILM hadn't worked, this movie. I mean, wouldn't that's have that's the worked. thing too is you could yeah. say for what you whatever you want to say. I mean, Coppola didn't have to t- take take care of not just you know the the makeup that uh, Dick Smith was doing and the acting. You know it, that that was it. Like he wasn't creating. Well, not creating, but directing people to create new visual effects that had never been seen before. Right. You know, so like he literally split his time between directing the movie, going back, and yeah. <laughs> making sure that the hippies that he hired, because that's the other thing, too. A bunch of students. But, well, yeah. no, they weren't a bunch of students. They were... A lot of them were. Well, of, well yeah. some of them were, but the, the, the big people and the people who were, like, heading up the, the visual effects, a lot of them were just kind of like... That hippie mentality, like, you know, we don't really need to do our work, man. You know, that yeah. sort of thing. And he and actually had... Smoking pot, throwing well, frisbees and shit. Well, the, well, the point is, is that, <laughs> that, that, you know, Lucas was juggling all of that. Yeah. You know, trying to get these people that he's hired to actually build the shit <laughs> and, and do the work. Uh, and, and yeah, it's it's a strain. It absolutely is a strain. I can't he even imagine. He did have a lot of hard workers, though, is my understanding. He, he did, but at the same time, like, there were people who kind of did have a counterculture mentality, and it, it was a struggle. Interesting. Um, but, but they didn't have yeah. the effects done in yeah. time. <laughs> so, Well, two things took longer than they thought as well. Yeah. I mean, they had a lot of delays, and... I mean, it's it sounds stressful just talking about yeah. it. You know what I mean? Being at the helm of this kind of project, like, whoa. Well, let me see if this movie made some money. Highest grossing film of all time at, <laughs> it, or at its time. Oh, oh you okay. sarcastic <laughs> dick. Oh, my God, John. I got to see this movie. This sounds good. <laughs> this, the Star Wars? The Star Wars. Sounds good. <laughs> Get out of my face, both of you. Oh, but yeah, obviously, the worst. overnight, this guy is a fucking rock star. Right. Yeah. Damn too. Biggest yeah. director in the world. Can't wait to see what he directs next. It's going to be twenty two years later. Um <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, probably the best thing he could have ever done was step away from the directing chair because Empire Strikes Back is so awesome. <laughs> oh, it, it is. Empire. Although I mean it, it, many people say that he he did direct it, like and Kirshner wanted to kill him because he's just right there behind his shoulder. Oh that's not how you should fear the puppet. <laughs> Get out of here. You told me I'm the director. Oh, yeah, in theory. Yeah. In theory. <laughs> just back. If, if, if my little chest hurts, I can just go lie down, but no, I'm going to be here. <laughs> wow. Oh, my little wow. chest hurts. I'm wow. Just my pants. Wow. Other thing to know, and I think we've mentioned this a couple times, um, Star Wars was a bad film prior to- Oh, we should acknowledge this. Prior yeah. to uh, his wife- Yeah, man. 
getting in on the edit. Marsha Lucas Marcia made the Lucas. thing. Which who he divorced in 1983, so after she was done making his stupid Star Wars movies look good, he immediately kicked <laughs> her to the curb. Yeah, <laughs> man. Bye, bitch. But, but I mean, that's the <laughs> truth, is, is that people who've seen the film prior to... It was a disaster. It was really bad. Mm-hmm. Like, all those clips, I think a couple years ago, a lot of the deleted scenes from uh, A New Hope came out. Yeah. With a lot of big stuff. Like Biggs being having a larger part, and it's fucking terrible. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, it, it's it's really bad. <laughs> and well, you yeah, and it's. F- oh, I'm sorry, Lincoln. I'm sorry. I was just as a as a as a woman, it's just gratifying to see that you know Marsha Lucas really took this film, and she, I mean, she made it what it was. She did. She won an Academy Award for the editing because she took a film that like probably wouldn't have worked, and she made it into fucking Star Wars. I, I mean, I mean, I think it's worth saying that. Without Marsha Lucas uh, getting involved, this movie would have just been a B grade film. Hundred percent. Oh yeah, it would have uh, been a Corman been, movie. It would have been, been a forgettable, film. forgettable AF. Yeah, you, but there are that you can find videos online of the original edits of scenes and then how she came in and redid yeah. them. Mm-hmm. Like there's a scene where you know uh, it's fascinating, guys. Like when listeners, first, like you got to check it out. It's so interesting when they first see like the R two D two hologram of Princess Leia, mm-hmm. and then in the original edit, then Obi Wan gives him his lightsaber, and it seems almost like they're dismissing, like yeah, what's happening to mm-hmm. her. It's like and so oh, they, look a hologram. Eh, so, nothing. Here's a lightsaber. So they use <laughs> right. close ups of R two to switch it around, and he gets the lightsaber first, and then they see the hologram. So it's like okay, now it has more impact. And the ending of the movie is a huge deal is that in the original version of the movie, they just attacked the Death Star, and the Death Star is not coming after them. Yeah. So they just look yeah, like that's, cold that's blooded troublesome. terroristic murderers. Yes. Right. So they, it's all in editing, it's all in post production. They didn't go back and shoot anything to make it sound mm-hmm. like the Death Star is coming after them. Yep. Right. And it's, and, and it's that yeah. ratcheting up of tension that makes that last third so good. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, that, that I will say this. Um, the first Star Wars has probably one of the best third acts. It is a great third act. You know, yeah. it, it is ratcheting up that tension to the point where it is, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah. Which, you know, that, that ending makes no sense unless they're about ready to attack, and mm-hmm. destroy all the rebels. Agreed. Because like, what is, what is the Empire like evacuate now in a moment of triumph? Like your moment of triumph, <laughs> you killed like seven pilots. So what? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, like, a moment of triumph. Yeah. Amazing. Um, but yeah, the best thing he could have done was step away uh, and because Empire Strikes Back is a lot of people say it's the best. It, 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 I right. Mean, of I, I said it, I said Return's my favorite, but in, yeah. if, if I'm looking objectively, yeah. Empire is the best of the original trilogy. Absolutely. Hands right. Down. It, it, it creates almost a different mystique for George Lucas because he kind of has like I, I like he almost has the God spot. Like I'm overlooking my my creation now and like i've even handpicking directors which you think oh you gotta direct you know you have to you know, right. from the no i'm even watch i'm over the director and i'm watching mm-hmm. over the special effects like yeah he creates him kind of like i am now a star wars god a star wars god well i think <laughs> that mentality kind of comes through in his treatment of these films after they've been released well, it comes and through years the, later through the special editions and stuff. Oh my god! And the goddamn prequels. Hashtag drunk with power. Because because oh. that is that's an important plot point to look at with Lucas's life is he really doesn't view these films as for the fans. He views them as for himself. Yeah, that's uh, evident. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's like with Zoetrope and everything. Like, yeah, they they didn't want anybody telling them no ever. Yeah. yeah. Um, Which I can understand to a point. To I mean, a point, yes. I can understand because you don't want to have some big nameless studio, and uh, well, faceless studio, basically saying, yeah, your idea is stupid. We're not doing that. You want no from other artists. You don't want them from Suits who Correct. only want other I, I don't. I wouldn't want to hear from some venture capitalist in New York, oh, yeah, your movie's stupid. We're not giving you money. We can't so, sell this to McDonald's. So yeah. I, I, get, I get that point. I think, I think and honestly, if you, if you look at interviews that Coppola has done, that's the mentality he's coming from, is he has stories that he wants to tell. But the difference between him and Lucas is that whereas Coppola tells the story and then steps away and says, hey, you it, you know, that, that story I just told is going to resonate with my audience. And then it becomes my audience's stories. 
Yeah. Um, whereas he does with the Godfather. Uh, Lucas is pretty much just like, no, these are my stories, they're mine. my toys. <laughs> my toys. My toys. Yeah. And this is the way that the, my toys play. And if you don't like it, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, pretty much. You, and, and it's like, oh, you want to see how my toys played originally? Yeah. No, you're going to get my special edition. That, I modified my toys. That I modified my toys. Because, like my car. Because now I have all the toys that I wanted that I didn't have back then. Yeah. And now that's the only story you get to listen to. Ooh, John, watch. you have an interesting take on that. Did you want to speak to that? I Obviously, have, since we're married and live together, I get to hear John's opinion. I have ahead of no time. idea what you're talking about, so please fill me in. Well, you were saying like the special editions and like altering them and like having different uh, versions of them. Yeah. You said oh. like um, both Spielberg and yeah, yeah, like how they yeah. Yeah, the thing is about you know, and we'll we'll, we'll get more in depth here into the special editions, but um, the thing is when when Spielberg redid ET and changed all the guns to walkie talkies, like when you. <laughs> When you bought that, I forgot he did that. When that was a special edition DVD at the time, there was you could watch either version. Yeah, you, there was. I yeah. don't know if it was two discs or um, or you could switch between on the same disc, where you could watch the original version or the walkie-talkie version. So Spielberg at least gave you the option to choose yes. what you wanted to see. Right, do you want to see the new one with my updated stuff, or do you want to watch the one that you fell in love with? Yep. That and that's the biggest problem with George. I don't have any problem. With his remastered films, I, in fact, I think it's kind of fascinating. My problem is, is that he won't allow you to see well, the the original he, version. Here's the interesting thing about that. So um, I think it's the I forget what the the archive of, of the National Archives. Yeah. Okay, so Congress, sta- or? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, one of those okay. film registry. Yeah, the film it was a film registry. Okay. So Star Wars was chosen. To be in that. Mm. And one of the things that you have to do to be included in that registry, in that archives, uh, basically it's for uh, the cultural <laughs> appropriation so that we all have those pieces of original film yeah. um, <laughs> forever. Uh, one of the things that you have to do that Star Wars has never done is supply an original negative of the film. What? Really? Yes. Star Wars They've has never, never done, done that. that. So it's not actually serious? in the National Film Archives. Well, you know, that's the thing is, it, it, but that's the truth. It's It's been selected, but it, they have never, and this is not just with Lucasfilm, this is with Disney. They have never supplied the original 1977 print. No, it's mine. <laughs> How do I not know that? I'm a fucking nerd. That's very, you know, well, yeah. honestly, guys, you know, we talk about. How we're so annoyed by the remasters and all that. You know, none of us have ever seen Star Wars. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. We've right, seen even, A New Hope. Like that, when the well, movie even the VHS out, version I have yeah. isn't right, right? Well, the yeah, uh, the only way the to one see from the 1983 original, is if you get the 1983 VHS tapes that came out. Incorrect. Really? Because the movie he fucked those up too. Well, the movie isn't <laughs> called A New Hope. The movie was right. called Star Wars. Oh yeah. And the only way to see it without episode four, New Hope, is to see an original projector copy of the film. Right, so but is that the, the ones, only difference? My point is that there's no... Okay. You know, that there, he's been modifying them for years, and there is I no... See. Unless you see an original print of the film, right. there is no pure version of it. Now, I see. The, yeah. the only way that you can get even close is by watching fan edits of Star Wars. Yeah, which do really? exist. Yeah, so there because of uh, Lucas's fuckery, um, <laughs> and Disney's uh, continuation of said fuckery, um, fuckery. There have been a lot of fans who have gone through and honestly done uh, angels' work, in my opinion, of piecing together multiple sources, sources from the DVD, Blu-rays, you know, fan, uh, so, like people actually having. Uh, the projection versions, yeah, and s- piecing them together, digitizing them, and making them work so that they are as close to the original from 1977 as you can get, and they're online in the dark alleys of the internet. <laughs> um, but the dark web, the dark web, the dark, yeah. not the dark web. It's called, <laughs> called torrent sites. But the yeah, point is, is that those do exist, so that you can, to some degree. 
see it. Now, it would just be really fucking nice if George Lucas is listening to just release Are you listening, good George? damn 1977 digitized print. That's Guys, all we want. I hate to tell you, but if he even listened to the beginning of this, He's we've talked I know, so much I know. shit. I know. Wait, George, listening? <laughs> George, I was just kidding. You're the best. Give me money to make a movie. <laughs> no, but but you know what I mean, right? Your like, beard is like I'm just use oils. <laughs> wow. I'm just saying that, that it would be really nice. It'd be a nice treat if we just got a Blu-ray of the original 1977 print. That would be nice. That would be I'd nice. Be into it. That, I think it's all everybody I'd wants. Be into it. Way well when he dies. You, know, that, you think? Not until I he don't dies. think so. I don't think so. You don't because, think Disney will release it? No, I, I, they don't They could make to. a lot of money off of it. They could make a lot of money off of it, but I, I think they're more invested in the let's add digital shit and you know, re-up another Blu-ray. Let's you know? replace Alec Guinness with Mickey. Oh, my God. <laughs> These are the droids we're looking for. <laughs> yeah. So, so- <laughs> Do you want to, since we've talked a little bit about, you know, films, a little bit about kind of his special edition fuckery, do we want to finally get into the prequels? Well, I mean, look, we, 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 we'd did, be remiss we if we didn't mention a little bit. Uh, Indy. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, the, you know, he does the right thing by working with a much more talented filmmaker, Steven Spielberg. Once on upon a time, Dark. Steven Spielberg and George Lucas decided they hated women. <laughs> Well, if you actually, if yeah, if you know anything about the original script of Raiders of the Lost Ark, um, Marion Crane, they were supposed to have met when she was fourteen, and Indy fucked her brains out, and she, oh, oh god, yeah, and Indy was supposed to be like twenty nine years old, and George Lucas doesn't see any problem with this, and I imagine oh, Steven Spielberg man. got the script and went, dude, what the fuck, <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? It's like, well, well, it's not a big well, no, deal. Well, he, he like he brought her into he, woman he hall, brought, um, yeah. Yeah. Ew, at 14. Yeah. Oh, and apparently he was vomit. like, you know, I don't think this movie's going to sell if Indy's fucking a child. So let's <laughs> rework it. Sick. Let's you make know. her run the same age. Can we, can we do that? Yeah, maybe that maybe. might be a good maybe idea. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Make, maybe make her a fucking adult with consent. And if you guys think I'm being like weird, like look it up well, on the internet. The, there it's is. Real, well, here's no. the thing. There are little remnants of that in the finished film where she says, I was a child. Yeah. She says, I was a child. What do you think yeah. that is? Yeah. I mean, it might be almost like I had a crush on you, like because they took out the fact that like Indy just took her to Pound Town as a kid. <laughs> Pound you know? Town. Uh, there's my bull whip. <laughs> do, 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 do. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! god. But, I want you know, John to reenact every movie ever. But here's you know where it, you know George Lucas continues his homaging of the movies that he grew up with. Indiana Jones and Star Wars have a lot in common in yeah. that sense, yeah. um, right? But you know then. In 1983, we get a very extreme, 83 and 84, we get an extremely bitter man who's going through a divorce <laughs> and creates um, uh, sand vaginas that eat men whole. The Sarlacc, and then, for those uh, of you Sarl- wondering. And then, He's basically calling Marsha Lucas a Sarlacc pet. John ruined yeah. my life with that one, by the way, y'all. <laughs> Being married to John is hard. Yeah, it's a sand vagina that just eats your whole. And in Temple of Doom is the most bitter, hateful movie I've ever seen. Kids getting beat up and people's hearts being ripped out. And oh, and uh, what, what's what her is face? the name of the uh, Willie woman? Scott? Willie, <laughs> yeah, who is basically like women suck. That's I really basically. don't like women George suck Lucas and um, and they're and, catty and yeah. they're loud and shrill. Listen, guys, and horny. Hot take. I really don't like the Indiana Jones movies because the women are so insufferable in them. What? Uh, what about uh, Marion in the first one? She's like fine, but like it doesn't make up for the rest of the movies. And like I, uh, it's that thing. trope of like I can drink you under the table and I'm tough and I'm actually just a man character yeah, where yeah. it doesn't it just doesn't feel like the movies are for me there's just no fucking pleasing you is there ew <laughs> I, i'm I mean, allowed I'll to not like I, I do have kind of a soft spot for uh temple of doom gross because it was one of my the first indie film i didn't i didn't see raiders first i saw temple first oh that's interesting so, brian that yeah. makes it because that, that one was all over tv yeah. and hbo yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah they're fantastic for naps though i will oh say absolutely that. they're great for naps um but then we get into what I like to call like producer George Lucas. So we can just, we basically would just name these off. We don't really need to talk about Perfect. Um, Labyrinth, Howard the Duck. He produced Labyrinth. 
Yeah. Oh, well, he was an yeah, executive that, producer, mm. so he was one of many. Like, okay. A lot of his finances went into it. Okay. And there are shots of him on set trying to, you know, tell David Bowie how to act. Yeah, and you're, you're what exactly really? Oh, uh, you're not using your puppets, right, Jim? Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh, show, here, I'll bring Yoda in, and I'll show you. Oh, let me show you how to do it with Yoda. Oh, we just god, this fucking bearded <laughs> asshole. <laughs> this bearded <laughs> asshole, guys. The, and Jim's just like, you know, I'm Jim fucking Henson. I'll do what the fuck I want. Uh, there was <laughs> Captain EO. Captain. Which Lane and I love. It oh, was uh, at Disney World. It is, it is the greatest thing. I feel like, so John and I went, I went for the first time to Disney for my 30th birthday in 2015. Mm-hmm. And John took me. And he'd been there before. You've never seen two fully grown fucking adults so happy to see anything in Disney as John and I were to see Captain well, EO. Because I was like, oh wait, Hack Rod George Lucas wrote a movie <laughs> starring Michael Jackson and it was coked out Coppola directed it. It was directed this is by be, Coppola. This is going to be amazing. And it's uh, Angelica Houston's in it too. She's really young in it. And So I, Captain EO is playing at Disney? It was. Well, well like, it was like were, the anniversary. Because well, it, it originally came out in 86 and I would think it was like... The 30th anniversary of it or something? No, honestly, John, I think they were just playing it because they were doing some construction. There's something totally different. Oh, God, different. I'm looking at the poster of this. Jesus, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dude, no, you don't even know how good it is. Okay. I got to so find this. this it's is, like, it's, awesome. and it's totally online, but it's it's like old school glasses and old school 3D. Yeah. And it's like kind of. I, four, I think I have a pair of them. It's like 4D-ish. Like they yeah. like blow like, like air at you a little bit. But um. So this is a ride? No, um, it's just it's like you sit in the experience. theater. It's like a yeah. okay experience. Okay, but like I think they were doing construction. There's like I don't know what is it? Is it like Finding Nemo or some shit? Now it's in yeah. Epcot. Okay, but they were just playing it. I think because they didn't have anything else going on because they were like planning the construction for whatever's there now. But like John and I saw it. We saw Captain like EO. Times? And, and, and so ser- seriously, times. there's no fucking line. I mean, John's <laughs> exaggerating, but we we legit saw it three times. No one wanted to see it. No, and John and I every every single time it just got funnier and funnier, and we were we were like pissing ourselves. We laughed. Tony so much Cox fun. is in this, and his name is Hooter. Hooter, yeah, yeah he's no. a little blue elephant. If and he you farts. if you are around our house, Brian, if you're around our house long Hooter. enough, you will hear one of us say Hooter just for no reason in Michael Jackson's voice. That's what I mean, that's that's what, how we live oh our lives. My God. Oh, an audience, if you're wondering, Black Michael Jackson. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> definitely. This is eighty six. Yeah, and like this is eighty six. <laughs> and like to be playing like the dancing in it is fucking incredible. Oh god. Oh yeah. I mean, the, it's, Michael it's Michael Jackson. Michael, but the, the da- like the dancing better be good. <laughs> but seriously, you've point. never seen two happier assholes That's than the two funny. of us in fucking Epcot when we were like, oh my god, is that Captain EO? <laughs> and we, I mean, and it was, it was a making a video before, and like, yeah, Lucas oh, still has yeah. a fully black beard, and he has a serious fucking look oh, on his face. Oh, the making of. Making, it's yeah. so good because everyone's taking it so <laughs> seriously and they all look like fucking douchebags. Oh, you God. know how serious Coppola is as yeah. a filmmaker? But the thing is, he looks like he's the fun one when doing next to George Lucas. Fuck yeah. yeah. Oh my God, guys. I totally Florida. forgot about Lucas's involvement in Captain EO. I'm yeah. so glad we discussed it, you guys. I feel like you all know me more as a person now. The tagline is, we are here to change the world. Oh, my God. Brian. What the fuck Brian, the that? first thing you do when you go home is you have to okay. fucking watch gotta, that shit. It's that. so fucking funny. Um, but speaking oh, of so happy Disney, right now. Uh, we, we should really talk about Star Tours. And yeah. I think we need to talk about the history of this because, and this is what happens when billionaires get uh, moody and jealous of each other. <laughs> um, yeah. So Steven Spielberg got involved with Universal Studios when right. they were launching, right. and he gave them, you know, uh, Back to the Future because mm-hmm. he was an executive producer on that, ET, and all this stuff. And George Lucas went, "Oh, I have a bunch of money too. I'll show you. I'm gonna work with <laughs> Disney." Wow. Interesting fact: 1955, George Lucas and his family actually went to the opening of Disneyland in California. So he's always had a fondness for it in his heart. Interesting. Um, so he's like, I'm going to give him Indy and Star Wars, and it's going to be better in your Universal Studios. I'll show you. Oh, um, wow. And so, yeah, that's where Star Tours was, was born out of. And Star Tours is the best ride ever. Um, yeah, he produces w- Willow, ever. Land Before Time, Tucker, The Man in His Dream. Uh, they went back uh, with his buddy uh, Spielberg to make The Last Crusade, um, a movie that only I remember, Radioland Murders, he produced. Wow. Uh, and then, yeah, we get to the prequel. So he is back finally in the director's chair. Um, <sighs> and I I feel that, like, I don't want to breeze through it, but I also feel like we could talk about it forever. So how do how do we put encapsulate 
the prequels. Uh, can, can I take a stab at this? <laughs> yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah. Okay. So go, Brian. This go, is Brian. this is Lucas at his uh, most egotistical. Hashtag drunk with power. And nobody will tell him no. No one yeah. will tell him no because keep in mind that this is right after he has released, you know, the special editions, which at the time people loved. People flocked to the theaters of them. And on top of that, he's like, not only am I releasing special editions of this, but I'm also going to make a new trilogy. So this period of between 1997 and 1999. Okay. Yeah. Uh, episode one comes out ninety nine. That is Lucas at his most drunk with power, his most egotistical. He is still known as the creator, and he could do no wrong. And he's finally rich off his ass. Yes. What we didn't mention is with his divorce in eighty three and other things like he lost a lot of his money. And so he he wasn't a billionaire. Could always. it almost be that the Sarlacc yeah. pit apparently ate him? <laughs> it ate. Is her. that what is that Ouch. what she was? And the special started. editions, you can actually see a bunch of dollar bills with his face <laughs> falling into the Sarlacc pit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, it, but this is around the time that he starts to recoup his like gigantic yeah. amounts of profits. Yeah. But, wow. So, so so he's rich again. He's rich off his ass. I was worried. He's, I was really hoping uh, the rich white guy would come out on top. Of course, you know. Uh, he's rich off his ass, he's drunk with power, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to make the prequels. Um, and as I said, this is his, him and his most egotistical, and no one is telling him no. And what we get is three movies from a guy who should not be directing and or needs writing. to be reeled in. Or producing. Or well, like working with the actor. Well, again, this is no one is telling him no. The entire yeah. production. If you go back and watch the behind the scenes, bad stuff, George, no. which is people great. are looking at the floor. Or well, like looking well, they're at looking at the floor, eye. and yeah. he's talking about how Jar Jar is the the key to everything. And he thought he was the new Yoda. Well, fuck that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there is no way that you're looking at, at Jar Jar Binks and saying he's the new Yoda. Well, no, in a sense that, like, if Yoda didn't work, the movie didn't work. And if, if Jar Jar doesn't work, the movie doesn't work, and then Jar Jar yeah. didn't work. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Jar, but, Jar, but, Jar Jar sure didn't you, work. Okay, okay. But here's the problem, though. Here's the whole problem with that concept. Um, you're looking at the script, and you're reading Jar Jar's lines, and the lines are His terrible. His racist lines? His extremely racist lines. There's so much racism yeah, that was in Phantom so bad. And, well, there's, that was so there's, bad. There's a lot of racism. First of all, yeah. Watto is complete anti-Semitism right there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. complete anti-Semitism. It's real bad. And I can't imagine the the two other characters what they're supposed to see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ugh, I yeah. The Trade Federation, that. again, yeah. you should. Complete xenophobia towards Asian people. Yes. Okay, uh, but the point I'm trying to get across is that you can't look at that script. Robert Zemeckis levels of xenophobia. <laughs> <It is. Yeah. laughs> but you can't look at that script, and you can't look at Jar Jar Binks' lines and say, this is the future Yoda. Bullshit. Mm -mm. This is called, everyone else around him is like, uh, he's paying our wages. Um, let him make his fucking movie. We know it's terrible. You can't say that they didn't know it was terrible. They all knew it was terrible, but no one wanted to speak the fuck up. No. Nope. And it hit him like a ton of bricks. And so it changed course once they got to episode two. Because what happened in episode two? Jar Jar is no longer in there. Except he looks right at the camera. He looks right at the camera. <laughs> but he's he's minimized from what he was going to be. Because he even said, if you look at the back behind the scenes stuff, Lucas says, the whole movie hinges on Jar Jar. Everything's about Jar Jar. Yeah. And I don't know why he put all of his eggs in the Jar Jar basket. Well, no, That's here's, so dumb. I'll tell you exactly why. He didn't think the movie hinged on Jar Jar. He just thought, if little kids love Jar Jar enough, we can sell a lot of Jar Jar toys. Yeah. That's so sick. That's yeah. sick. Make a movie, not toys. What the? But going back on Guys, Star Wars upset. here is that if you actually dig deep enough, you find out that George Lucas had a lot of toy etic in mind with the original Star Wars. Like it always was. Oh no, he didn't even know it was going to succeed. He wasn't thinking about yeah, toys. He, he was thinking about his vision. No, the reason there weren't any toys made in that like thing, like at Christmas time, you could just get the 
little thing in the mail that said, oh, we'll send you toys in the fall. It's because the studio didn't think that it would succeed, so right. they didn't want to build any toys. But George Lucas always had in mind of selling yeah. plastic toys well, and T-shirts He and reached boxes. out to toy companies yeah. before so the movie never, even came out. Yeah, he's never really been a filmmaker. He's and been a business I, I personally definitely recommend The Toys That Made Us, the yes. Star Wars episode. Yeah. Yes. Fascinating stuff. I mean, the show in general, John and I like salivate yeah. for the new season every single time. Got to watch the Star Wars episode. It's fucking fascinating. I yeah. mean, they put Kenner on the map, the Star Wars yeah. toys. But I think, I think the prequels prove that George Lucas is, is not a filmmaker and that he's a businessman. Agreed. Yeah, I think that's he's a very thing. good businessman. Very profitable yeah. businessman. Bless. Uh, but yeah, after Revenge of the Sith, he basically retires from directing. He yep. produces a few more things. But then in 2000, was it 12 or 13? He sells to Disney. Sells I think it soul. was 12. Was it 12? I thought it I was it 13. I don't know why. For $4 billion, two, two in cash and two in stock. I think um, uh, Yeah. I think that was the last of my humanity that died. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I remember when that happened and you know i i thought at the time oh you were right brian it was 2012 but i i, t- I thought at the time maybe this is a good thing wow because the way i looked at it was look what george did with the prequels mm-hmm. how bad can it get yeah and i was wrong <laughs> <laughs> i was really really Really, really wrong. Yeah, it was on October 30th, 2012. Disney announced yeah. a deal to acquire Lucasfilm for $4.05 oh, billion. There better have been king size candy bars at George Lucas's house on Halloween. <laughs> with approximately half in cash and half in shares of Disney stock. I guarantee you he just gave out like quarters. Yeah. He's, that, he's that asshole. Whoa, this is an interesting headline. George Lucas says he sold Star Wars to white slavers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the funny thing is when years later, when um, what the fuck was it? Uh, Force Awakens comes out. Yeah. He trashes all of Disney. Wow. Well, their money was green. Oh, my God. He like he literally did a press junket and did interviews trashing Disney, calling the white slavers just horrible things. Horrible How thing. Not have him sign like a uh, NDA. Yeah, yeah. They should have four billion dollars is a pretty big NDA. Yeah, it's like yeah. Here's your four billion. Don't say anything bad about us now. Don't say anything about Star Wars yeah. unless yeah. you're talking about your movies. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> your movies that are now our movies. Yeah, that are now our <laughs> movies. Yeah. Damn. Um, so wow. Guys, uh, Savage. Let's get to kind of the bigger questions to wrap it up here. How do we define George Lucas? Is he? Is it? what he did as a businessman or is it what he did as a filmmaker? He's, I mean, I feel like he's definitely more than a person. I feel like he's an entity, you know? And, and it's weird because like, I mean, this is like more deep than you probably want me to get. But like, for me, I had to come to terms with the fact that like this filmmaker I really admired isn't really a filmmaker at all. You yeah. know what I mean? He, he made a couple of films, sure. Yeah. But like, I think like it was weird because that was like the first time like I had a hero and like realized like, he wasn't a hero at all. <laughs> it sucked. I mean, I figured all this out when I was like, you know, like 16, Could it possibly 17. be that he was the chosen one? You were supposed the chosen, to be the chosen and one. Yeah, maybe. He I was mean, supposed to bring balance to filmmaking. Right? I mean, like, I, I mean, Which, you guys and are left it in, the and left it in darkness. You guys Anakin are making... just bring balance to the force because there was no Sith, oh my... and he brought balance because he brought the Sith back. All right, shut up, nerd. We're talking about other things. Um, no, very but... true. Yeah, <laughs> but one—I mean, but you know, for me personally, like I said, I mean, that, this is a very personal kind of episode because this is like you know he was like kind of my hero, and I was like he can't do anything wrong, and I realized like you know like your heroes aren't always what you think they are, and like it's kind of a shame, like yeah. I, I was disappointed in, in him over time and like, you know, now it doesn't hurt when John makes fun of him constantly, but like twelve year old Lane, if she had heard some of the things that John says would have, kicked him in the balls. Would have been like, No, he's great. You're so stupid. What the fuck is wrong with you? Well, I mean, twelve year old me twelve year old me might have still said fuck actually. But you know, it's it's You forgot interesting. to have the braces in your mouth. It's interesting. <laughs> Oh no! At twelve, I didn't. I had a brief hiatus oh, yeah. um, on braces. Um, but the um, the interesting part for me, I think, is like 
I started out thinking that George Lucas was one thing, and it turned out that he was something very different. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, he still gave us Star Wars. He still gave us Indiana Jones. And for that, I'm always going to love him. And if I ever met him, it would still be like meeting a rock star for all the the, the snotty things that I've said. I mean, would you yeah. still call him fat to his face, or how would that work? Well, no, I would probably just rub his belly and be like, I'm going to tickle you, and Skittles will come out of your pockets. Would um, you rub his belly I, and make a wish? Oh, yeah. I think I would just say, I think I would just ask him, like, <laughs> Can you explain to me what your logic was behind the prequels? Like, can you just? Oh yeah, right. Well, Harold you mean George no, no. fucking Lucas? I mean George Lucas. I'd say thank you for creating Star Wars. <laughs> thank you for creating Indiana Jones. What happened? <laughs> oh my god, you guys would not. Well, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Years ago, I met uh, Bill Mosley, who you might know from uh, Rob Zombie films. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I met him at a convention years ago, and. Nice guy. Seriously, one sure. of the nicest guys. Sure. Plays a maniac sure. in film. Um, but seriously, one of the most down-to-earth nicest guys. Uh, a movie had come out probably two years prior uh, that was a Christian horror film that oh. he's in. Okay? It was a Christian horror film, and it was really terrible. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I honestly I forget the name of it, but if I look it up on IMDb, I'll probably find it. But... Point is, is I asked Bill Mosley, why did you do that movie? I think it was called Three or something like that. Okay. Um, and and Bill Mosley was very matter of fact and just kind of said like, well, you know, I was on the on the plane and I got a script and uh, you know, I just I did the movie and I'm getting the and like I'm it, it's it's code right. for I wanted money. Yeah, I needed yeah. the money. Yeah, like, I needed the money. And that's the thing. It was, it was, foundation it, was money. it was it was code for uh, I needed the money. Yeah, um, or I wanted the money right. because you watch that movie and it's like. But but the point is, is that I still said the obvious thing, which is you're amazing in every one of these Rob Zombie right. films. Right. You know you're amazing in Texas Chainsaw Massacre two. Silent Night Deadly Night three. Silent Night Deadly Night three. <laughs> and you do a Christian horror film in right. which. You're not like raping a corpse, so what's up with Bill, that? Bill, if you're not raping a corpse, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, but but my point is that that you know I still asked him a very straight up question, and right. I would still ask George Lucas. Well, you know, why listen. you did this great thing? Hey, why did you do that? Speaking of raping a corpse, let's talk about the uh, remaster. No, I was kidding. Uh- <laughs> listen, I'm just saying that even after all we've said today. If I was in the same room as George Lucas and I went up to him, I'm not sure that if I went to speak, the sound would come out. All right. He's just he's I mean, he's a big name. He's a big. Yeah. Like, I don't even know if star or celebrity. The, 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 the point word. is, is that, like a you know, big deal, a, icon. a part of icon, our culture. Yeah. I think it's the big thing is a part of our culture. Yeah. Has been shaped by him. Absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely. the point. Well, where, part of our culture has been shaped by him. where does George Lucas exist in, in conjunction with his contemporaries? Coppola, Scorsese, Bogdanovich. I think he has entrenched himself in pop culture much more strongly. Yes. Like I think that he's yes. he hasn't affected cinema so much as he has nestled himself into genre, into other mediums, you know, because we didn't even talk about, I mean, the stuff that he had nothing to do with, like Rebels and the Clone Wars. I mean, like, there, we've been, we've been given a lot of material in the Star Wars mm-hmm. universe, whether it's canon or not, that has, has spanned all kinds yeah. of media, you know, yeah. comic books and books and cartoons and, you know, and toys. I mean, I like me a good Funko Pop every once in a while. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I, I agree. I mean, I, I really believe that, his contribution has more or less been to our culture, right? Rather I, I than agree. the films, um, I would say that that Coppola is a better filmmaker. I mean, um, I'd say Scorsese is a better duh. filmmaker. Um, I'd say St- Spielberg is is a better filmmaker. But I think that where Spielberg and Lucas do kind of come together is in that they both contributed to our culture, right? More so than their contemporaries. But their contemporaries um, have contributed more to cinema, I yes, would say, especially yes. Scorsese. Yeah, yeah. If we're really going to talk about it, if I, if I'm going against George Lucas and Scorsese, <laughs> Scorsese wins. Like, yeah, it's not even it's it's well, from volume of work alone. I mean, well, all of his contemporaries have talent, created more work, but just talent, right? It's talent at Agreed. that point. Talent, vision, um, talent, and vision. And George is three inches taller. But yeah, but I I, mean, I would say that you know, uh, Goodfellas 
is nowhere near the cultural level as Star Wars is. But it's a much, much better a film. Much better film. Right. Right. All right. Guys, if you had to pick one, is George in gun to your head, so you can't be level headed about it and okay. say it's in the middle. If you had to pick one, is George Lucas a genius or a hack fraud? Genius. Genius, because he's a genius the whole way to the bank. There's nothing hack fraud about his billions of dollars. Mm. Gun to my head? You said yeah. gun to my head. Because obviously the answer is somewhere in the middle. But gun to my head, I have to say genius too. That's right. I would have to say genius. As well. I, 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 I can't. Yeah. I can't call him a hack fraud when the man made a part of our culture for God's sake. How the right. hell can yeah. you do that? And like all the and all those dollars. Like, you know, come on. Now, dollars. now a person like Derek Savage would be a, absolutely a hack fraud. Oh my! Oh, we're bringing my, Derek my buddy Savage. Cool Your buddy Cool Cat. We're bringing Derek Savage <laughs> on the show right now. I would right say now. that Derek Savage is absolutely oh, a hack fraud. Oh good. Okay. And it's nowhere Derek. near. It's Daddy Derek uh, Gen- time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But but yeah, I mean, I would say, I have to say genius. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, did he finally become everything that he um, originally despised? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. He, he lived long die enough. Hero lived long enough to see. <laughs> he lived long the enough. He absolutely became the two face. Yeah. Of this <laughs> story. Absolutely. And it's really absolutely. a shame that everything that he he kind of stood against that he became. Yep. And yeah, what what a what a surprisingly complex man for. I bet if you spent a month with him. You'd be like, this is the most boring guy I've oh, ever probably. met in my life, you know? Probably. Um, so, yeah, um, I would say that George Lucas is more of, you know, because I thought, like, is he a director? Is he a writer? Yeah. Is he a producer? Is he a businessman? I think the best way to describe him is George Lucas businessman and yeah. innovator. Yes. Yeah. More than anything about film. But if I had to pick something about film, I'd say he's a writer, first and foremost, I, I would, in the filmmaking. I would sure. honestly put him on the same level as, as Steve Jobs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. you know? He cultivates talent, yeah. and just Steve like Jobs. Steve Jobs, he's like, this is what I want. Make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very cool. Very cool. I think that's we talked very, a long we talked time. A lot. We talked listen, a lot. Listen, I'm telling you, my first hero and my first fallen hero, this is a big fucking We deal. talked about a lot about a guy who only directed yeah. five movies. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, that's great. Uh, Six John, where can they find you at on the Twitter machine? At the real George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he doesn't have Twitter, but there is a certified check mark of a fan Twitter of George Lucas. I don't even know how that works. <laughs> I adored the I adored that you looked, John. Yeah. yeah. You wanted oh, yeah, to... I was gonna I was gonna slip into Georgie's DMs. Yeah, you wanted to, you wanna slide in those hey, DMs. George. Um <laughs> you're not gonna want to talk to me after this one. Um <laughs> the Unreal J Wolves. Sorry. <laughs> Lane. At LA underscore Croft. Uh, you can find me at, at Brian Contos on the Psycho Show page. Uh, before I get to our usual thing, just want to mention, we now have a new feature on our website. Really cool. Uh, if you ever want to leave audio feedback, <laughs> I just might be opening up a can of worms. Uh, if you or leave, leave us a message. You can leave us a leave voice us a message. Nice message. You could say, you guys suck ass. Please don't. Um, or you guys are amazing. Yes, um, that, that. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah, do that. Yeah. yeah. Bryce was smart and Lane's a talented John sucks. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to leave a message for, for Brian about, um, what was it, John? Oh, about uh, Lufas and Crisco. And, yes. uh, John, John already and left Crisco. a message for yeah, Brian yeah. on this new feature. Uh, it was amazing. I sound like Yanos from Ghostbusters. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. yeah. I, I might actually post that as a bonus, by oh, the way. That's so good. Um, so, so funny. So anyway, we have this new feature. We're using SpeakPipe. Uh, great website. Uh, and if you go to not our innovated webs- by George yeah. Lucas. <laughs> if you go to our website and you go to the contact section, there is a, a form that you can record an audio p- feedback for us. So please let us know if you have got questions that you want us to answer. We will re- we'll take your, your audio and we'll put it on our show and we'll answer them on the show. Uh, but point is, is that that's a great way to contact us. It's better than just send us a text or send us an email. Oh, you can still do that. This is really cool if you want to get just your own audio feedback to us. It's real easy um, to do from your phone. Really too. easy to do from their phone. And if you want to record your farts, that'd be funny. That's cool, too. We'll, oh, my we'll, God. That'd we'll be hilarious. Those. But anyway, it. you can also find us at Epicast Network, epicastnetwork.com. If you have a favorite movie or question you want to throw away, you can contact us at cinemasychoshow.com. Make sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and iTunes, and we will see you next time. Well, for your consideration, Red Tails. Epicast.